everybody, it's Jamie from Plato and Preschool. Thanks for joining me today. I'm by myself again on a Friday afternoon. Gemma and I spent some time after the students left setting up our centers for next week and I wanted to give you a peek at them. So the way that our centers work, we have students who come either two mornings a week or three mornings a week. So we plan our centers for the entire week and that's plenty of, um, plenty of activities to keep them busy. Our students are free to do centers, hey Brittany, um, from about 9 until 11 each morning. We take a snack break in the middle. And I like to think of it kind of like, like a children's museum with different exhibits. So they are free to visit the exhibit or the center or the invitation to play. Um, Gemma and I move around the room during that time, meet them there, uh, engage them in conversation. Uh, each day at the beginning of centers, I'll introduce one of them, one that I think that they should really try, or I'll say, come do this with me. But then after that, we do not time them uh, or mandate that they rotate through centers or anything. And this, that setup works really well for us because our students are, for the most part, very engaged in their play. Their attention spans are really good. Maybe not so much in our threes class here at the beginning of the year, but I know that it will improve over the school year. Um, they stay focused because they pick what they want to do and then they really get into it. And so that's what we want. Hi, you guys. Hey, everybody. Um, a few, I guess maybe like a month ago at the beginning of the school year, Gemma and I shared that we plan our centers. So dramatic play, blocks, sensory, literacy, math, light table. We plan those all out for the full year. When we first started teaching, we did not do that at all. So if you are um, just getting started or you're new to preschool, you do not need to do that. Um, but we're sort of in autopilot just because it's 13 years. So I printed this spreadsheet out for us. And then each Friday afternoon, we just go through and it's kind of like a game to see how fast we can get it done and switch everything out. So this is going to be for the week of the 25th and we just change out dramatic play, sensory table, science center, light table, block center, um, this is like our literacy center, math center, um, and we just check, 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 check it off and try to get things set up and ready for the next week. I think it's really important that teachers, as teachers, we do not spend more time planning and preparing for lessons, then the children will actually spend playing there. So I try to keep that in mind. You know, if we're planning for, you know, six hours of play, I'm surely not going to spend more than six hours. Um, I'm not going to spend more than six hours planning and preparing it. And it's gotten easier over the years. So I've done other videos on that too. If you're new, take a deep breath. I know it's hard, but it gets easier every year. You can print this off. I don't know if it's helpful to you or if you just want to follow along with the videos, but you can print this off. It's in my Google Drive and I left a link up in the video description. There's also a blank one if you want to try it and type your own ideas in. So we change almost all of the centers every week, Trisha. Not everyone. Like our art easel right now has kind of been the same for all of September. For dramatic play, for the most part, it's a home living center. And then we just sort of rotate through some of the toys just to spark their curiosity and give them new ideas um, for their pretend play. But not everything every week. Like in the blocks too, those are pretty basic. You know, the, the basic setup is the same and we just add out, you know, add in something new each week or trade out the toys. It's kind of like a big system of toy rotation, right? Uh, I've done other videos too, but uh, at our sensory table, we keep the filler the same for the whole month. Right now it's white, plain white rice, and we just change out the accessories and tools and toys that go in it. So that keeps everything easy. And like I said, we've been doing it a long time, so we have a lot of things in our storage closet that are just really easy to just pull out and switch. So I'm by myself, which as you know, doesn't always go very well in terms of the camera, but I thought I would just give you a quick tour around the classroom and show you what we have set up. The table that I'm sitting at is a round table that seats six. I'm glad you're here live too. It seats six kids. Um, see, uh, it's just a circle table. And we always set up our literacy activities here as well as some specific fine motor because that's really important for their grip and everything. So it sort of rotates like letter practice, fine motor. Letters or name practice, writing. 
And this week we're doing sort of a name, you know what all these overlaps, but like a name writing activity. So I'm gonna scoot the camera back just a tad bit so you can see what we have set up. And then I'll pick the camera up and just kind of take you on a little tour. I wish I could just have everybody over. That would be so much easier. I could just say, hey, come over on Fridays at two o'clock and I'll just show you around. But since, uh, since that won't work, I guess we'll have to just stick to the Facebook, so, okay. So, what? Oh, and then that's gonna be backwards for you. Hold on, hold on. I won't do any crazy filters without Gemma. Sorry, now I'm gonna look crazy to you. Okay, let's see. Come on. Oh, it's not letting me do it. Well, I was gonna try to flip it so that it's facing the right way. Okay, no, Facebook doesn't wanna cooperate. Sorry, it won't let me flip it the right way. So these are the student's name, uh, names written on a big sentence strip. And what they're gonna do here is practice tracing their names. So this is specifically for my pre-K students. That means that they're four, four and a half, almost five years old, and they're going to kindergarten next year. And so I've written their names on a sentence strip, and then I just have a tray full of markers. We practiced using markers last week, so with any luck, they'll remember how to use the lids and put the lids back on. And then what they're gonna just do is just trace their name. They only have to do it once each day, but the kids kind of like to do it um, they might like to do it over and over again, which is totally fine. But we ask them to try it once each day with a different color, and it ends up looking like, you know, like a rainbow. So every day they trace their name with a color, and then on the last day, on for this class it's Wednesday, they come Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, then we staple it and make a hat. <laughs> so our kids really like to have things to take home with them. So this week they're making rainbow writing name hats. And this is so simple to set up. It's really just a piece of um, sentence strip, but you could use cardstock or whatever you have. You just buy these two foot long sentence strips. And some markers, that's it. So I've, I'll show you here. But I just prepped it by writing their names on one. And that's all they do. So they just rainbow write it every day, a different color, practice tracing. It's good for their fine motor, good for their pre-writing skills for practicing how to spell their names in case they've forgotten over the summer and then at the end of the at the end of the week they just take it home so easy enough I don't think this is gonna work I know this isn't gonna work for my younger class my three-year-olds they are not here yet um, at all which is fine so what we'll probably just do is some marker coloring here because I taught them how to use markers last week and so they need that extra practice with kids so TPT for the days of the week I'm not sure what I'm not quite sure which question is. Do you have a TPT for the days of the week? Like a calendar? I'm not sure. Ask your I'm not quite sure. I'll come back on. Okay, so I'm gonna flip the, the camera around. I'll show you our light table and our sensory table. Because we're kind of sitting, so this is kind of in my science and discovery area, which is light table, sensory table, science center, and my class pet lives over here too. Okay, let me see what I can do here. Let's see if this will work. There we go. Okay, so come along on a tour. What I have here is our light table, and this is super simple. These are, it's just a decorating, like an art project at the light table. So we cut out some tree trunks with just plain brown construction paper, which is super easy. It's just, can you see? It's just brown construction paper. And then we put them here on the light table so they look like tree trunks. And this is, I think they call it table scatter. It's just plastic pieces of leaves and apples, and so they can just decorate a fall tree. So that's easy enough. And then you, look, we didn't even finish. We did a bulletin board the first week of school and then we were gonna change it and we never did. So we are definitely not perfect. Things don't get done around here sometimes. This is our sensory table. And last week we had those big river rocks with their letters in them. This week we have it set up as a birthday party invitation to play. So there are some Let's see, number candles and muffin tins from the dollar store. Those six count muffin tins are, from the, tins are from the dollar store. Those are silicone muffin liners, some measuring cups, and then just some individual birthday candles. So our students naturally are always filling things up and saying happy birthday. They'll stick pretty much anything in to make a birthday candle. So we've just set it up for them. Um, just set it up so they could play birthday. birthday. I don't know, birthday party. Tracy, here's the thing about the leaves. I'm, um, I'm not 100% sure. I mean, I just got them at the craft store. They were in like a fall, you know, like an end cap with some of the fall scatter and stuff. 
um, and I don't know that I can find them on Amazon. So I'm sorry, the leaves are from the craft store. On the end caps, in the seasonal displays, they always have like little baggies of transparent materials. I don't know what real people use them for. Do you really put table scatter on your dining room table? That would never fly at my house. Um, because my house is always a mess and I just wouldn't want some extra table scatter. But I guess if you're having like a fall party or something, you could put table scatter. I don't know what, I don't know what real people use them for. For preschool teachers though, every time I see something like that that's transparent, I'm like, that will be perfect on the light table. <laughs> so right behind me is our is our science center. Let me see if I can. All right, so this is our science area, and each week we change it out for just a different, um, just something for them to explore. There is my phone again, I'm sorry about that. Um, oh, we've got it set on a timer so that it's not on when the kids are here, but it's ringing out, sorry. Anyway, um, this one, we've been all month doing the five senses, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. And this week we're on um, things we can touch and so I know there are lots of different on Pinterest you can see lots of different cool like touch boards but this is just a simple one that I made so I'm gonna set the camera down and see if I can show it to you sorry sorry about the phone I swear I get like these telemarketer calls they call every day at the same time anyway so I just made this little touch board it's a um, trifold board so I can just put it away and take it out it's a tiny one though it's like 14 inches, it's tiny. And on here we just stuck different things that the kids can touch. So this is contact paper, it's sticky. This is a file folder, like a plastic, you know, like one of those inserts, so it's shiny. There's a cotton round, some aluminum foil, some sandpaper. Um, this is foam, this is a piece of like tool, you know, like you might put in a tutu or something. This is a piece of Velcro. Got some bubble wrap and some felt. So it's just a touch board. And the goal, of course, is that when the students are here, we can meet them. I'll probably lay it down like this so they can touch it. Um, but we'll meet them here and just say, like, what does it feel like? And work on that vocabulary. Oh, this feels, this one is sticky. Oh, this one feels, you know, scratchy. Ooh, this one feels smooth or shiny, you know, shiny is kind of what you see, but, um, you know, the cotton feels soft, the, you know, the Velcro feels rough, and so we're just really trying to invite them to work on the vocabulary. A lot of our kids need a lot of practice with language and speaking and oral language and um, expressive, you know, skills, communication skills, um, and so this is just a spot for us to just be here with them, talk to them, and, you know, um, try these different senses. You could put it in a bag, like in a brown paper lunch sack, and have them reach their hand in, you know, to see or to feel it. Um, or you could put it, Karen Cox from Pre-Kinder, she puts hers in an empty tissue box, so you could reach in and feel it. Uh, all of those are awesome ideas. This is just what works for us in terms of storage. I'm also gonna run to the library this weekend and get some of those books that are like um, Pat the Bunny or like Touch and Feel, different animals, you know, and put those over here. I don't have little kids anymore at home, so I don't have any of my own, but I think I've given them all away. But I'm gonna stop at the library and get a few of those board books, so. Regular people fill vases or candle holders with table scatter. Kara, you're so smart. See, you must be a regular person on the weekends. I think I'm always a preschool teacher. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna flip it around. I'll tell you one more thing. So over here, at our, this is our block area, right next to the science center and the sensory and light table. This is our block area. We always have these wooden hollow blocks. We always have the cardboard brick blocks and we always have these unit blocks. But then each week we try to add something new. So this week um, we added these 10 apples up on top. And so it's, sorry, it's just these are just unit blocks. And we glued a picture of an apple to it and put numbers on the back and there's 10 of them. So they can build, you know, try to build 10 apples and we put the book with it. We haven't added too much there. The kids are still playing every day with our ramps from Kodo Kids. And then I got this awesome thing. This wasn't on the original plan, but I got it from Scholastic uh, in the September catalog. It was part of their bonus points. And it's a magnetic marble track. Let me see if I can show you. I took a lot of videos of my kids doing it because they were doing such an awesome job. So I will try to post this soon so it's a little 
So what it is, it comes with all these pieces like this, they're foam, and they've got this big piece of magnet on the back, and they come in different shapes. There's like a curvy one, there's a bumpy one, this one is like a wavy one, and there's like a, I don't know what you're, I've been using this one, it's just a magnet. But then what you can do is they give you different suggestions for how to set it up. And so our kids are, have been, they've been doing a decent job with it. And then you put the marble, which I've got hidden because I had three rolls today, hold on. Then you put the marble in and watch it go down. Ooh, I hid my marbles. It's better than losing them, I guess. Anyway, I hid them up here in my, so you've got this like cabinet full of toys. <laughs> Anyway, I put the marbles up there for the little kids because I didn't want them to use them unattended. And so what you just do is, you know, they put the marble in and then just watch it and try to get down into the container. Our kids, our, especially our pre-K kids, they were crazy about this center this week. They played with it for like some of, a couple of them, that's all they played with. I mean, not all, but you know, like they loved that. So let me show you a couple more things. Yeah, the marble track is awesome. Okay, so then over here is our dramatic play area. And for the most part, it's a home living center. Last week though, we added some baby dolls. And this week we added a birthday party. So all of these props, I think I spent $5 at the dollar store. We got plates, birthday hats, cups. I got some crepe paper and then this little centerpiece thing. And then I have this little wooden cake from Oh, it's probably Melissa and Doug. And so this is just an invitation to pretend to have a birthday party. So it's really super simple, which is how we like to start it in, um, in the fall, in September especially. And then we get more complicated. I did add some role play name tags for my older kids so they can choose who's gonna be the birthday boy, who's gonna be the mom, the dad, the friend. Um, but I'm not sure if the little kids will use them. So I'm trying to answer some questions. Jackie, a ping pong ball will not work. It is very narrow. It's like less than an inch. Let me see if I can answer some more questions. A ping pong ball will, ooh, a ping pong ball will not work because that little foam piece is really thin. Um, we did do it with our threes, but only when there was a teacher over there and we just kept the marble with us. So if I was sitting there with them and they would build the track, then we would give them the marble. And as soon as they were done playing with it, I just put the marble in my pocket and moved away. So if we saw kids over there who wanted to play with it, we would go over there with them, add the marble, and then just kept it in our pocket. <laughs> um, a ping pong ball wouldn't work. It's, a ping pong ball is much thicker than that foam space. The role play name tags are on TPT. Yes, Arlene. Um, it's in the birthday party dramatic play set. There's also um, some like different tags in there and then a bunting if you wanted to print a pen of bunting. And somebody asked what curriculum we use and I like to say it's kind of like a hybrid curriculum. So we've definitely written our own curriculum. We studied a lot of, I've studied a lot of curriculum over the years and we've kind of taken what we like, what works best for our students from different, from different philosophies. I love the room setup on creative curriculum so I'd say that my room is set up according to the models on creative curriculum, but I haven't purchased their like weekly like units, like the balls and the trees and everything, so. Um, the role play tag holders, and those, um, they're just on a string, like on a ribbon, and then those are 3M hooks that you can just, you know, you stick them down and then you move them when I change things around, so. Hopefully that answers your question. I'll show you my math center, and then I think I've got everything, but maybe not, not to tell me. If I miss something, let me know. So we've got a little like reading area over here. I need to switch the books out. That's still on my to-do list before I call it a weekend. Um, and then this tiny little table is our math center. And what they do here is these are uh, Apple counting mats. And so we're just practicing numbers so they can, let me see if I can do this one handed. Probably not. All right, so what they do is they can sit two people at the center and they practice counting the numbers, one, two, three. And then we have mixed in here some different forms of that number. And so they can just dig for it um, and then decide if it's three or not. So they count them. That's one, two, three. So this one does match. Um, this one is just one. So they would put it back or give it to their friend. Let's see, it's three fingers. And so it's just practicing very basic numbers. Uh, later. 
let's see, later in the year, we will probably put those like in the little sensory bins, but we are just not there yet. I'm gonna try to sit back down so I can answer some more questions and I'm getting really close to the time when my kids get home, so I need to probably head up in a minute. So, um, we have very few students. It's a tiny class. I have zoning permission for nine at a time, so we're in for two classes of nine, so it is a really small class. I know. I know. I don't know what to say. Sorry, I wish it was bigger. <laughs> anyway, um, if you have any more questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments. I think I showed everything. Dramatic play blocks, science, sensory light. I think I showed everything. Here's the other thing. Today is the last day to enter our chip clip grab bag giveaway. You guys have been so generous with me with the chip clips. Um, I've had people sending me different kinds of chip clips. Thank you, thank you guys. You're like melting my heart, so sweet. And I have, I bought some extras and I have some extras. Um, and so if you want to, uh, to win some chip clips, there's a link in the video description to the one where we have the raffle copter giveaway. I'll send them to you if you're in Vienna or wherever, Australia, South Africa, I will pay to send you a $1 bag of chip clips. <laughs> um, but I have a whole bunch of these to give away and so I want you to make sure you can enter uh, and the link is up in the video description or over depending on how you're watching it. How do I keep all of your kids from trying to get in one spot at the same time? Shelly, that's an awesome question. Um, so our big philosophy here is that we want them to be able to solve problems. We want them to be able to negotiate the space. So very rarely do they all want exactly the same thing. But if they do, for example, they all want on that magnet board to do the marble track. Um, and then it gets crowded over there and you know, they start pushing. And we always see that as a learning opportunity. That's a teaching opportunity. So we'll go over and say, you know, what's the problem? Well, I can't reach, you know, I can't get there. And so we try to talk them through that process of problem solving and negotiating the space. So I'll say something like, it looks like only two kids fit at this center. Same with our writing center and our art easel is kind of limited. Um, I can see only two people fit at this center. So how are we gonna solve this problem? And at the beginning, um, you know, they're not really adept at, at working that out. But by the end of the year, they'll usually say, um, the kids who can't fit will say, I'm gonna go get a timer. How about if you guys play, and then when the sand timer is up, uh, we can switch and take turns. So that's a super idea. Um, and we just really try to give the students the opportunity to negotiate those deals. Because that is, that's what it's all about here. It's about the social, emotional, and the language. And so we try not to, we try not to direct them too, too much into how things should be. We try not to, we try not to, you know, overstep our boundaries in terms of what they can and can't handle. For the most part, they can handle space nego negotiations. So the chip clip poems are not on TPT right now. I just have them as a free download. Um, I'm working on some for ghosts and pumpkins. <laughs> snowman and Christmas trees. You guys are so generous um, to send me some of the ones that <laughs> I'm missing. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to write the rest of those up. I'm not sure if they'll go on TPT or if it'll just still be a Google Drive download. I'm not 100% sure, but grab them now because they're free up on the Google Drive. So, all right. If you have more questions, my kids are going to be home in three minutes. I have to run. If you have any more questions, please leave them in the comments. I'll put up some more snapshots of our classroom um, if you want to pin them or save them on your Facebook. And thank you again for joining us. Enter the chip clip giveaway. I've got a whole bunch of these to send out to you guys. Have a great weekend. See you next time. Bye.